Air India is back in the news again, and this time it has a much better outcome than Air India 171, but it is eerily similar in some ways. Let's take a look and I'll explain. Air India C-157, say again. For technical reasons, sir, we'd like to stay closer to Hong Kong. Uh, maybe we will uh, come back and land back in Hong Kong once we sort out the problem. We don't want to continue further. Okay, Air India 315 is departing out of Hong Kong, an airport that I've flown in and out of several times uh, on their way to Delhi. Uh, this aircraft now experiences a uh, malfunction. It is a engine fuel filter light. I'll explain that in a minute and why that's such a serious deal. The captain <coughs> calls out to uh, ATC at Hong Kong and says, essentially, I want to stop departing from the airport and turn around and start heading back. He explains that he's got a, a problem with the aircraft. It's a fuel filter problem. Why is that a big deal? Well, one of the potential issues, and let me emphasize potential, with Air India 171 was the potential of fuel contamination. Fuel contamination would show up in an engine fuel filter light or lights. So given the fact that just a couple weeks ago, the potential for that could have taken place with the other Air India flight, this Air India captain is on full alert. And I, in my 34 years at my airline, have never seen an engine fuel filter light come on before. And I'm here to tell you, if one came on, I would take it very, very seriously. Why is that? Let's listen in. So one of the things that this captain does first is he immediately gets his airplane turned around and headed back to Hong Kong. He knows he's not going to continue on to Delhi with this fuel filter light. What is that fuel filter light telling him? Well, I've got a printout here of what that looks like in the cockpit. So he's going to get several lights that come on. He's probably going to get some sort of caution light. And then on his ICAST screen, his main screen in front of him, he's going to get a little thing that says engine fuel filter. And it's going to say left or right. It might say both, which in case he'd get two lights. In this case, he only gets the one. It's the right engine. Here's how that procedure goes. As soon as it lights up on his screen, the co-pilot is going to ch hit the checklist button and an electronic checklist is going to pop up and he's going to begin to read. And so the pilot monitoring or the co-pilot is going to say fuel contamination can cause fuel to bypass the engine fuel filter. That's the condition that they have. Fuel is bypassing this filter because it's so clogged or so contaminated that it potentially could cause a disruption of fuel to the engine. That's as serious as it gets. Now, is it for sure that there's no fuel going to that engine? Nope, because the engines are still running. So the next thing is you're going to want to monitor the engine performance to make sure that you're still getting a steady state of fuel to that engine. It could be that the sensor that says whether the fuel filter is clogged or not itself has gone bad and it's just giving you an erroneous signal. That's one potential. But you've got to take it seriously as though your fuel filter is actually uh, clogged and you're actually going to be on the verge of a potential engine failure. The procedure goes on to read like this. Only one engine fuel filter message, left or right, has shown during the flight. In this case, it's just the right side. It says basically monitor engine performance, which I'm telling you the pilots are doing. Note, erratic engine operation and flame out may occur on the affected engine due to fuel contamination. I guarantee you every pilot at Air India is on full alert for fuel contamination. I've never seen it in my many years of flying. If I ever saw one of these, I would turn immediately back to the nearest suitable field, even if it was just on one engine. Now, you're going to see four square black squares underneath that procedure, which means you've come to the end of it if it's only the one fuel filter light that's come on. If it's both that's come on, which didn't happen in this case, but let me read on. Engine fuel filter message for both engines are shown or have shown at any time during the flight, either separately or at the same time. Go to step two. What's step two? Plan to land at the nearest suitable airport. Note erratic engine operation and flame out may occur on either or both engines due to fuel contamination. 
And so I'm not going to wait for that second fuel filter light to come on to get turned around to a near suitable field. If I see one of these, I'm going to assume that I've got something wrong with my fuel. Now, many people have been talking about the potential of fuel contamination on Air India 171. And I've heard people, pundits and experts say it absolutely couldn't have been that. And here's why. Both of those engines are, are fed by different tanks. And it's inconceivable that both tanks had fuel contamination. Well, it's not because on departure and for the probably the first I don't know three three and a half hours of that flight both of those engines were fed by a single tank that's the center section tank so if you're going from Ahmadabad to London you're probably carrying somewhere around 135 140,000 pounds of gas both of your wing tanks are full. Your center tank has probably 30 to 35,000 pounds of gas in it. You're going to burn the fuel out of the center tank first. So yes, you had a single source tank feeding both of those engines at the same time. So there's your potential number one for fuel contamination. Number two is even if it were separate tanks, the wing tanks, feeding the engines, which would take place later on in the flight, all of those tanks, all three of them, were fueled by a single fuel source. And if that fuel source were contaminated, you should assume prudently that all the fuel on the airplane is contaminated. That's exactly what this captain is doing. He's looking at a single engine fuel filter, which allows him to actually maybe continue and just monitor if he wants to. This guy's been flying too many years to do that. He's going to turn around back to Hong Kong. Let's get this on the ground. Let's have maintenance check it out before I get a second fuel filter and I start seeing any sort of erratic behavior. Let's continue on. We'll be right back, but first a word from our sponsor. Let's talk about turbulence. If you're afraid of flying, chances are turbulence is the thing that gets you. It's the most common fear, that sudden jolt, that unexpected drop, the feeling that the wings are about to fall off, even though they're absolutely not going to. But here's the thing, knowledge is the antidote to fear. And if you want to take control of your flying anxiety, especially when it comes to turbulence, there's an app you need to check out. Turbulence Forecast, today's sponsor. This is the app that I've started to use to check out real-time turbulence maps before I fly. That's right, a lot of the same freely available tools I use in the cockpit are available to you right on your phone. Want to know what to expect on your next flight? You can purchase a personalized automated forecast. It gives you a detailed map of your flight path showing where turbulence is expected using easy to read color coding. A subscription to Turbulence Forecast allows you to plan ahead. They can give you access to global turbulence and weather forecasts up to 42 hours out. And if you want the long game, you can go up to five days out with the premium tier. That's global turbulence forecasting in your pocket days before you board. Whether you're flying next week or next month, turbulence forecast helps you fly smarter and calmer. Because when you understand what's ahead, those bumps in the sky don't feel nearly so scary. So download the app for free today and start your journey to understanding turbulence and overcoming your fear of flying. And thanks to Turbulence Forecast for sponsoring today's video. Sponsors like this help us to create more content for you. And it says contamination can occur. We have done the checklist. We've sorted all the problems. So he's already worked through the checklist. The air traffic controller is just verifying, explaining to me what the problem is again. He wants to get that on the recording so that other people can listen to it. But he's also said, we've worked through the checklist and he's worked through this checklist. He goes, yep, we, we're monitoring the engines. We, it could be potential fuel contamination. It could be a potential of a flame out. We don't want either one of those. I want to come back to Hong Kong and land. This guy gets an A plus on airmanship and judgment and heads up uh, with this. Let's continue. Engine fuel filter problem. Engine fuel filter problem. Filter problem. Engine fuel problem. Roger. Engine fuel filter problem. 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 Engine fuel all right, everybody is extremely professional during this entire evolution. They do get the airplane back to Hong Kong. Uh, it was uh, out of service. Uh, for about 28 hours. I'm assuming that they, they swapped out the fuel filters. It might have been a sensor problem. We don't know exactly what the issue was, but this 
captain does an excellent job at taking something that eh, at first blush doesn't look like that big a deal and understanding that there is a cascading domino effect that could take place where he'd lose an engine or both engines. And you know what? That's first and foremost on every Air India pilot's mind. I'm sure it's every commercial pilot around the planet is thinking now about things like fuel contamination. That's what this conversation helps with as we're hangar flying and we're talking about the potentials and the theories of what might have happened. It disseminates that information to every pilot. I've talked to dozens and dozens of pilots uh, over the last two weeks that have said, hey, I saw one of your videos. Let's talk about fuel contamination. Let's talk about vapor lock. Let's talk about that stuff. That's what we used to do in the old days when we sat around the hangar on a rainy day. We'd talk about those things so the guys put it back in their collective memory. And if they get something like this when they're heading out of Hong Kong or Delhi or London or LA or Boston or wherever they're going and they see that they go you know what I'm not going to press on I'm going to immediately turn back to the airport I'm going to get this thing on the ground that's always the safest course of events even if you've never seen one of these before and even if the procedure allows you the wiggle room to kind of continue on and just monitor uh, my experience level says i am not comfortable with this at all and especially given world events here in the last couple of weeks i don't think any commercial pilot is going to be comfortable at all with a fuel filter light left right or both um, coming on a plus plus to this captain he does a great job the air traffic controller does a great job as well uh, and that is the latest uh, from an Air India flight. This one had a terrific outcome. I hope you enjoyed the information that you got on this one. Now you know. I'm Captain Steve. Fly safe.